and welcome to today's vlog. Today I'm doing a little life update and letting you know what's been going on in my life lately. Uh, I popped a poll up on my Instagram stories the other week asking people what they wanted to see and this was what they chose. So, you lucky folks. It's been a little while since I did a life update. Um, nothing is really happening in my life at the moment. Um, I am back in the office one day a week. Uh, I work from home the other the other days. I still have my Wednesdays off. Um, so nothing much has really changed there except I am leaving the house once a week now. Um, it's been really strange being back at work and I had a lot of annual leave to use up so I've had a lot of weeks where I've had a day off in that week um, and it's going to be really strange when I go back sort of in April I'll be, I won't have any, I don't have any days off booked so it's going to be really strange working a full week. Um, but yeah I had loads to use up, I haven't done anything with my annual leave obviously. Yeah it's all been very boring in my life. I haven't really been doing any reading, I haven't read a book for weeks and weeks and weeks now. Um, I just I haven't got the, the concentration for it to be honest so I haven't bothered. Um, I've watched a lot of television though, I've been watching uh, the Circle, so I recently watched The Celebrity Circle for Stand Up to Cancer um, and then I watched on Netflix The US Circle and then I re-watched seasons one and two of the original Circle because the third series is on Channel 4 at the moment. I love The Circle. Um, when it first came out, I was obsessed with the first season. I thought it was amazing. Uh, Freddy was my favourite. It was just a really, really good series. Um, and it was really nice to rewatch it and catch up with it all. And I'd forgotten what dicks some of the people in it were, some of the players. And it's just been really fun watching it again because I honestly find The Circle fascinating. I think it's a really fascinating social experiment. Um, so yeah, I love it. So I've been watching that. Um, I've recently started re-watching Misfits. It's good fun, it's silly, it's easy to watch, it's easy to have fun in the background. So that's what I'm watching at the moment and I am on season two. Um, Neil and I have been watching on Amazon Prime a show called Ink Master. I think we're on season four now, season three or season either season three or season four, I can't remember which, um, and it is like, if you haven't seen it, it's like Bake Off, but instead of baking bread to be the best baker, they're doing tattoos to be the best tattooist, and it is just insane, and the whole show infuriates me, it makes me really angry to watch it, but I also love it, and I can't stop watching it, um, so Neil and I have been watching that, he is not as good at binge watching as I am, so we only sort of watch like one episode a day or a couple of episodes a week um but yeah ink if you haven't seen ink master and you've got amazon prime it's well worth checking out because it's really silly um yeah so we've been enjoying that uh we recently finished one division i it wasn't for me i'm not a fan of marvel i didn't really get it um, the first couple of episodes that were sort of very, had a really bewitched vibe to them, I really enjoyed. Um, and then it sort of went really superhero you know, I was like, yeah, no, I'm not interested in this anymore. And you all really liked it. Um, and he'll watch the second season when that comes out. And he's he's just started watching the uh, Winter Soldier one that's on Disney+. Plus. But again, really not for me. Um, so I'm not bothering with that. Um, and I think that's about it. TV wise really. Um, we're watching Taskmaster when it comes on. I've been watching the Pottery Throwdown which finished a couple of weeks ago. I've been watching Interior Design Masters which finished last night um, and I was really pleased with the winner of that. Um, so yeah it's been really good fun and oh I also watched another really silly show on Netflix, on Netflix called Blown, I think I think it was called Blown Away, and again it was like a Bake Off but glass blowing, and that was <laughs> that was really crazy. Um, that was just really silly. Um, so I watched that as well, but I 
I love shows like that, anything sort of that competition based thing where they have to make things. I really enjoy it. Um, so yeah, that's what I've been watching. Um, I've been in the evenings, uh, I've had my crisscross book out and I've been doing word searches. Um, that's the couple that I have filled in. Um, so I've been doing that in the evenings, like word searches and these crisscrosses. Um, I was doing my diamond painting um i had one i'm about halfway through it but i've been really i've had a lot of headaches lately um and it's sort of sitting trying to do the intricate diamond painting is absolutely no good for a headache so i've been really putting that off but i want to get it finished because i bought myself a new custom paint by numbers that i really want to get started and i don't want to have the two things like out at the same time so I'd really like to get the diamond painting finished but at the moment my headaches aren't really letting me <laughs> um so that leads me nicely on to health um as always my physical and mental health are big parts of my life things haven't been uh so great for me I've been plagued by a uh, really bad back pain for quite some time now and I am now on these patches um which are called um buprenorphine there we go um and it's basically a patch that you wear for seven days and it basically gives you a dose of an opioid painkiller through your skin um and they've they haven't stopped the pain completely but they've really knocked it back uh, and I wasn't sure if they were making a difference but when I had to have an MRI scan the other week I had to take the patch off and um, because I was due to change it the next morning anyway I didn't bother to put a new one on earlier I just left it and that sort of 18 hour period was agonizing so the patches clearly are sort of doing something um the MRI was a couple of weeks ago and then last I think it was last week I had a call from, no, I had a letter to say that the findings on the MRI meant that I would have to see a neurosurgeon just to sort of discuss my options, uh, but the wait would be six to eight months. Um, so fine, a lot of things in the NHS are backed up at the moment. So um, if I can sort of manage the pain, I can live with it. That's fine, it's not a problem. Um, but then last week I had a call from to talk about my back pain and I think the impression I got from the phone call was that they were trying to boot as many people off the list as they could so they can get through the list quicker so I think if they thought your pain could be was well managed or could be sort of physiotherapied out of you then they were going to dump you off the list. It was a really 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 aggravating phone call and it's really I've been thinking about it since and I've been thinking how stressful every single telephone appointment I have had in the last 12 months has been. Um, this guy started off by asking me why I'd had my gallbladder removed and I said mm, I haven't had my gallbladder removed. He said well it says here you have, it's in your notes and I said well unless somebody removed it and didn't tell me I have not had my gallbladder removed. He then apologised, oh sorry no I'm looking at the wrong notes that okay it's a mistake I get it but that kind of annoyed me because the rest of the conversation um he made it very clear that he hadn't looked at my notes he didn't know anything about me what he knew about me uh was my height and weight because he asked and then he proceeded to very strongly imply that if I wasn't so overweight um the back pain would be cured um he told me that the MRI found that I have stenosis in my spine, which is a fairly it's a fairly common problem for people. Um, usually in older people, I've I've managed to get stenosis quite early, but that's sort of in part due to the ongoing physical issues that I have. So as a result of my disability, I have got I've got stenosis early, basically. Um, and after sort of having a chat and me explaining actually that it was quite complicated and because I'm missing some of my spine it's not sort of as straightforward as you might think he eventually agreed that actually it would be a good idea for me to see a surgeon in person 
at some point um so I'm still waiting for that appointment and like they said it could be up to eight months so I don't know when I'm gonna see anybody. Some really positive things have come out of lockdown like more flexible working, hybrid working, being able to work from home. That's all been really good and really useful um, and for some people a telephone appointment is a really good idea, it really works really well and I already have and have had for a long time a three monthly standing telephone appointment with my specialist urology nurse um, where she just checks in and checks to see if I need anything and from that telephone appointment she can make me any appointments that I need and sort things out and it's really helpful so that has been fine but a number of the other telephone appointments I've had have just been a complete shambles because they don't listen they can't see you as a person and it's just, it's been really, really frustrating because they don't listen. They don't want to listen to you. And as soon as they ask what I weigh and I tell them, they, well, if you lost weight, you'd be fine and dandy. Well, okay, yeah, I am fully aware that I am overweight and I can stand to lose weight. I obviously completely agree with that. It's very true. And a lot of my issues are magnified because of my weight. I get that. But to be told I'm not a candidate for surgery because I am too fat and that was what he actually said to me. He went on to say that if I wasn't prepared to lose the weight then I clearly didn't want the surgery and wasn't prepared to help myself. This was for a urology surgery and that just, uh, what? You know, my mobility is rubbish. I can't walk very well. I can't exercise properly. I eat as little as I possibly can I'm doing everything I can to try and get that weight off and keep that weight down and just to be told that I'm not even trying is really, really frustrating. Um, so that was another annoying conversation with a urologist who I then spoke to again and he asked why I didn't want surgery in the first place, so why I'd opted for my urology issues, why I'd opted to have uh, Botox and a bulking procedure done in my bladder instead of surgery and I, so I explained that I'd been told I was too fat for surgery he said obviously the less you weigh the better your recovery the better the surgery will go he said but we can certainly book you in for surgery so I spoke to this other urology doctor for a very long time and we talked about how the bulking and the Botox in your bladder have to be repeated every six months and they don't always take, they can fail. And what that would mean for me is a general anaesthetic and a surgical procedure basically every six months. Now I have medical PTSD stemming from urology surgery um, so I don't think the best plan of action for anyone is to repeat this surgery every six months and I wasn't told that the first time around I wasn't told that that would be the case uh, it was implied it was a one-off and it would sort my problems so that was why I went for that option um, so we discussed a surgical option instead and I have since been booked on the waiting list for urology surgery um, and it will be basically three surgeries in one so they're going to redo my original cystoplasty that I had 20 years ago because it's starting to fail, it's not working as well as it should. Um, so they're going to redo that. I will have surgery for an autologous facial sling which is basically they make um, a sling out of a flap of your stomach muscle. They surgically add it under your bladder and it lifts your bladder up higher basically so that's the second surgery and the third surgery that they'll do at the same time is to reroute my ureters your ureter ureter um which is basically the pipe that goes the pipes that go from your bladder to your kidneys um, i have reflux in both of mine so they will reroute them to try and fix that improve that make things better so that's three surgeries in one and um, he told me it will take eight hours uh, that I'll be in ICU for two days and have to have a 10 day hospital stay uh, four hours away from my home in Bristol um, so fine but that would mean one surgery 
that will potentially last another 25, 30 years. Um, so to me, that seemed like the more sensible option. I, why put myself through something every six months that isn't guaranteed to work when I can put myself through something once and have the problem fixed? Um, so that to me makes a lot more sense. So much has been going on health-wise. I haven't been sleeping properly. Um, and so I've changed my bedtime sleep routines and I'm going to be talking about that in a vlog soon. Um, but I've bought some over-the-counter sleeping tablets. So Nitol was one and then sort of the pharmacy brand equivalent of Nitol. Um, so I've been using that and I've changed my sleep routines. Um, so now I can get off to sleep quite well. The problem is staying asleep. So I usually... Fall as I can fall asleep and I sleep for a good couple of hours and then I'm awake for a good couple of hours. Sometimes I can fall back to sleep before the morning, sometimes I don't. So that's not been great and obviously when you're tired, again, everything already feels so much harder when you're tired. Um, so that's been a little bit of a nightmare. Um, following on from my ankle surgery last August, um, my ankle hasn't been too bad. I've been getting a couple of weird pains in it that I'm not entirely happy about. So I have spoken to my orthopaedic consultant secretary and she's going to try and get me an appointment in to see him just to check everything's going okay. I had my first vaccination a couple of weeks ago. Um, that went really well. I did, I fell on my way to the vaccination and I've really, I really hurt my hand and my thumb and my thumb and hand are still sort of very, are quite painful now. Um, my thumb especially is painful. My hand aches a lot. So I bought uh, like a, a, a splint sort of hand support thing, which I've been wearing during the day and that has helped a little bit. So my hand's been quite painful, but uh, I was quite lucky in that I didn't really get any side effects from the vaccination. Uh, my arm was sort of, quite heavy and a bit sore the next day but um, I didn't really feel any of the other side effects so that was really great. Uh, my second dose is booked in for May uh, a couple of days before my birthday so uh, it won't be long until I'm fully vaccinated. Uh, so yeah health wise things aren't great, mental health wise things are really not great but you know Anyway, in other news, Neil and I have booked a Disney holiday. We're, we're really, really, really lucky and privileged to be able to do it. But our plan is to go twice in 2022. So we were due to go last year. Uh, that was cancelled. Um, so we are going to go twice in 2022. Um, we have booked our first well, we've booked our second trip, so we're going to go in October, November to catch Halloween and Christmas. Um, we are staying at all, the All Star Movies Resort. Um, yeah, that's all booked for two weeks. I've paid a deposit um, and we booked it all through Disney, which I know isn't the, the best way to do it. I know there are better ways to do it and you can book it separately and things like that. But for us it was a lot easier to do it all through one company and by booking through Disney we got half price park tickets and some other perks so for us it was just the best way to do it and we will also be booking uh, another two weeks in May we're hoping to stay at Port Orleans we are waiting to see when and if it's going to open because at the moment that particular resort is still closed um We'll sort of leave that for a little while and then maybe rethink where we're going to stay if it doesn't look like it's opening and we can book it because I'm quite keen to book it in sooner rather than later. But we'll see. Um, I'm really, really excited and like I said, we're. I know that we're really privileged. I'm really lucky to be able to do that. But I'm saving really hard um, to make sort of that dream come true. Um, and think of all the amazing vlog content that will be. Yeah, I'm really excited about that and it's given me something to look forward to. Um, everything feels sort of really dark at the moment and knowing that I've got that to look forward to means that there's a little light 
in the distance and that's it's a really great feeling uh, so I'm really excited about that. So in the immediate sort of future uh, we're supposed to be coming out of lockdown over the next few months um, as of Monday you can visit people in private gardens I plan to visit my mum and have a cup of tea in her garden um, so I'm really excited about that I'm sort of a bit gutted that I won't be able to sort of have dinner with her for my birthday and things but lockdown is supposed to sort of end restrictions are supposed to end more just after my birthday so we'll see what happens as you can see I am in desperate need of a haircut um, my split ends are horrific and I'm really bored of the blue now um, my hairdressers contacted me last week to offer me an appointment for the end of April so fingers crossed everything goes to plan we come out of everything like we're supposed to and I can get my hair done at the end of April once things are starting to lift and things seem safe and I've had my vaccinations and maybe Neil will have had his I'm not really sure because he's he's not in any of the at-risk groups um, so he might wait a little while for his but hopefully he'll get it soon um, we are hoping to get to Blackpool this year to see my baby brother at some point this year uh, once it's safe to do so so I'm excited about that uh, I haven't seen my brother since October 2019 which is really weird because even though he's mo he moved away I think five or six years ago um, I still used to see him at least once a year um, and it's been really weird not seeing him for such a long time so yeah I'm looking forward to getting to Blackpool to see my brother hopefully and that's it really um, like I said things haven't been that exciting how exciting can things be when you can't leave the house I've got some really fun vlogs planned coming up soon. I've got a gluten-free biscuit testing coming up and I'm going to talk about my celiac journey at some point and I've got a binge designs haul to show you. Um, people have asked to see my lounge fly collections. So that's going to be coming up. There's lots of sort of bits that hopefully will keep you entertained or or not I don't know I think my mum enjoys them at the very least um anyway <laughs> I will stop going on now because I've talked about myself for long enough as always thank you for watching if you like this video then please give me a thumbs up don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on all the fun action and I will be back soon with another video